All right, Spreaker, what's happening and what's going on? I am back, my friend. Check the up to relaxing and uh, trying to rework some equipment and uh, get back to my studies. I am here, friends. Let's get our intro going on Spreaker and more. we're going to go live on Restream TV. Welcome, friends, coast to coast and worldwide. You're live on the air with Pastor Rick. Hey, man, friends, how you doing on this Sabbath afternoon, early Saturday, friends, uh, about 2.30 or so on the dial. So let's tune in to everybody. Let's get uh, Tin Can. We've got uh, Radio.co on the line with us and, of course, our backup channel. Uh, channel uh, 3 now. I got some new update equipment, and uh, so we'll be doing uh, set that up. So let's get to it. Lots to cover. Amen. Oh, let's get to radio.co UK friends. While we have that opportunity now, let's get going. All right. Radio.co UK. How you doing, Pastor Rick? Uh, on a Saturday afternoon, the 10th of the month, February, I believe already. Let's get uh, our backup channel on Spreaker channel uh, three here. And there you go. Let's get the intros online here. All right. It's not very loud, but hey, it's close enough. All right. Well, let's, uh, who do we got left? We are going to go to our channel here. Uh, we've got uh, Tin Can on the line. If we can, there it is. All right, Tin Can, you're on the air live. Pastor Rick here, Ministry Podcast Network, for February 10th, doing an upload live recording on Restream TV. And, of course, this will get out to all the channels. So let's get our intro on the line, my friends. Uh, let's see if we can pick something out here. Uh, nice and easy today. It is our Sabbath afternoon service, so let's grab that intro. And let's get going here. If we can, let's see what happens here. All right, so it's going to go live here in just a minute. We are uploading live on Restream TV for a Saturday afternoon, friends. So let's get that, uh, get to it. Of course, it'll be uploaded on all the channels. Amen. Hold that thought, friends. We are getting going here. All right, Restream TV, how you doing? Pastor Rick Ministry Podcast Network, friends, for Saturday, 7th afternoon, early afternoon, 2.30 in the afternoon here, uh, Pacific Standard Time, uh, on Restream TV. We've got uh, Radio.co UK, our Spreaker friends, of course, and Tin Can, a few more uh, channels going live this afternoon. Happen to have a opportunity uh, to broadcast a little earlier, so there won't be an 11 o'clock podcast tonight. But uh, I'll have this one up, and then I'll post it out uh, to all the channels. And, of course, you guys will get that as soon as I get an opportunity. Uh, it's been a rough week, friends. I'm telling you, I, the, the attacks just haven't stopped. But, you know, I'm, I'm uh, pushing through. So uh, here we are. I'm not even going to bother with it. I'm not giving it authority. I'm taking that authority back, my friends. That's right. Uh, lots to cover. Uh, again, Ministry Podcast Network friends, Pastor Rick here on a Saturday afternoon, a little after 2.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, live on Restream TV and a few others, as I said, and then I'll get this posted out. Uh, we're going to go into, uh, friends, a lot today. Repentance, a message for the church. Uh, I'm going to go into that, uh, uh, kind of a repeat uh, message there. And, of course, John chapters 14 to 17 is going to be in the mix as well. So doors are open. Uh, church is on. Come on in, friends, and uh, make sure you got your Bibles with you, pens, papers, notebook, tablets, highlighters, for your highlighters. Uh, and a whole lot more. Settle down, uh, my friends. And uh, uh, as I get choked up, coming back into the studio, uh, like I said, I haven't been on the air for about a week here. It's been seven, eight days now. 
Uh, I think the last one was Friday morning at 3 o'clock, and uh, then the, the attacks just never stopped. My friend's equipment-wise lost a few uh, lost a few monitors again, like I kind of mentioned before. Uh, I lost um, some channels. Uh, the money didn't come in. The finances didn't come in. But I know God's got it. I have to just sit back and uh, trust him that, He's he's got it. So uh, we're gonna work with what we got. Got a few of the channels, main channels covered uh, for now, and we'll see what happens here in the following few weeks here. But uh, I got enough uh, channels to uh, operate on, and that's a good thing. Uh, and then the other thing, as always, our Wi-Fi connections non-existent. I can't go live for some reason. I'm gonna try it again. Uh, I may do a test run tonight or tomorrow. Uh, for Sunday services, but uh, I'll I'll see. That's that's been a big uh, problem. It never got changed. It never got settled down. So anyway, uh, yeah, grab that cup cup of coffee and your Bibles, of course. And uh, again, this is our Saturday uh, church service here, Ministry Podcast Network for a Saturday brunch. Already, could you believe that? Ten days into the new month already. That's amazing. So. Let's get to it. Let's pray it in, and then we're going to go into our podcast notes, our uh, intro notes and all that, and our scriptures, and then we're going to go into uh, the main message for this service is going to be repentance, a message to the church, friends. We need to have those ears to hear and eyes to see what the Holy Spirit is showing us this afternoon, friends, uh, for our church service here. <laughs> Amen. Get choked up, friends. It's good to be back in the studio. Let's uh, get to it, and then we'll go ahead and get started here, friends. Let's go ahead and pray it in. Heavenly Father, thank you uh, for this opportunity, for this church service uh, I have here today uh, to share this message, share the word. Uh, it is always awesome to uh, just be here and uh, be in your presence. As the Holy Spirit is always, always welcome here. Father God, I'm praying for everybody out there, everybody watching, family, friends, everybody connected, everybody going through their trials and all their situations, just the, the daily grind, Father. Uh, you know, just everything on a daily basis that we all have to go through. Uh, be, you know, as I say, be of good courage, uh, as, the, as the words uh, tell us. Be of good courage. Uh, Father God, and, you know, we lean on you. We, we we look to you as the author and the finisher here uh, to give us courage and encouragement and, and just peace in our hearts and uh, in our minds. So, Father God, as I uh, as, uh, continue on this mission, uh, even, you know, through all the gaps, through all the problems and issues and technical problems hitting me and uh, hitting the channel here, we know that's not from you, uh, as people say, as I've been told, and, oh, yeah, you know, uh, God's just shutting you down. Well, no, no, Father God, you're not shutting me down. You're, you're just. Uh, I believe it's a test, and you're you're testing it to see where I'm at and what I'm doing with what you gave me. And uh, I'm moving forward. So I'm gonna, I'm going to use that authority, Father God, that uh, you have uh, given me in this mission. So I thank you, and I pray for everybody out there again, family, friends, everybody watching here, and lift them up, encourage them. And uh, give them that peace of mind uh, as your angels are around them. Father God, as I have church today, I just thank you and I glorify you right now. Right now, here today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. All right, my friends. Uh, let's get to it. No time to waste. I tell you, it has been, uh, like I said, uh, it, it's it been rough. I've had a hard time this week. Uh, physical issues. uh uh, again with technical problems here but i i got some new equipment here i kind of updated a little bit so we got enough to operate on and, and that's uh that's what we got to do here uh to get some church today well and you know i'll try to get back on the scheduling here uh as uh, as i uh, as i'd like to be so we're gonna see my friends day at a time right give it all over to god and just do it a day at a time here so thank you guys for being so patient. I know the gaps are there. Uh, as I always tell you, if uh, there's podcasts scheduled up and they get taken down, don't worry about that, friends. I'll get back on it one way or the other. I'll figure a way out. And uh, 
uh, we'll go from there. So let's get to it. How about, uh, again, our, uh, our, op- our podcast notes, our opening notes here. Uh, Sinner's Prayer of Salvation. Get a hold of me. Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast uh, at Yahoo.com, our official email for the podcast. So let's see if I can straighten out. There it is. Uh, it always seems like I'm crooked for some reason. Let me get untangled here. New background. Like I said, that was up on the last few podcasts. I got that taken care of. Still waiting on the uh, board supply back here. So I found this and uh, thought that was a great uh, uh, addition to the podcast uh, channel there. To the studio. So anyway, uh, shout outs to my little sisters, my family, kids. Uh, channels, you guys know who you are. Appreciate each and every one of you, your patience, and uh, thank you guys so much for everything. Saying lots of prayers, sending out lots of prayers uh, to you. And uh, as uh, you know, as we keep fighting, friends, day at a time, that's all we got, right? All right, let's see if we can get this straightened out. Maybe, hopefully, I think we're okay. We got that fresh cup of coffee. Uh, friends, our Bible, our Word, our notes here, uh, like I said, a lot's to cover. Uh, our uh, series message, repentance, uh, a message for the church, friends. Oh, it's going to be a barn burner, my friends. That's right. Uh, let me grab some coffee, and uh, hopefully uh, I'll get everything straightened out without spilling anything. Amen. Got my fresh backup cup of coffee, my fly bug catcher, making sure we don't get no critters in that cup of coffee. It's not a hot tub, and it's not a jacuzzi, my friends. <laughs> Just in case the bugs are confused, thinking it's a hot tub or a jacuzzi. It's not. It's coffee. So, <laughs> here, here, Restream TV. Wow. Back on the air again, trying to double up on these podcasts when I can. I uh, had an opportunity this afternoon. Uh, studios were cleared out. No construction over the weekends until Monday. And then Monday, it's going to start all over again. So, got some moving crews coming into Studio uh, B and C. And the main lobby to clear some of the uh, extra stuff out of there. So, we're going to have a busy day. So, um, I may be doing early broadcasts. Uh, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, maybe seven o'clock we'll see how things go well anyway let's get to our notes brothers and sisters church is on we are here appreciate y'all waiting and being so patient this week uh i know i i looked at that and i was like wow the last time i was on was the second and that was uh friday morning about three o'clock in the morning because i had to wait for the wi-fi to go back on and that's what happens you know our our <laughs> we haven't gotten that straightened out even I got a main box here in the studio, in Studio A here, and uh, still having some issues with it. So I'm working on a way to figure out how to get around that. So anyway, uh, we'll see if we can't go live. Maybe I'll do a test run or something like that. So anyway, welcome. Come on in, uh, and uh, let's get to our Sinner's Prayer of Salvation. Let's open up with that right now and uh, glorify our Heavenly Father uh friends amen right amen church all right dear god i know that i'm a sinner and i need a savior Uh, i want to turn away from my sinful life to the life you have planned for me please forgive me for my sins uh amen cleanse me of my past and make me new i know your son jesus christ died on the cross for me and i believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead At this very moment, I accept, confess, and proclaim Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior to live in my heart from this day forward. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace that has saved me from my sins uh, and has given me eternal life. Please send your Holy Spirit to guide me and to help me to do your will for the rest of my life. Friends, church, brethren and sistren of the church, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And amen. All right, rolling right on through it as we always do it, friends. There you go. Serenity prayer, because Lord knows we need that serenity right now, my friends. Amen. All right, God, uh, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, 
Accepting hardships is a pathway to peace. Taking as Jesus did the sinful world as it is, uh, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will. That I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next, friends. Amen. All right, rolling right on through the uh, podcast notes, friends, and I hope you have them, and of course your pens and your papers, because we got a lot to cover today. All right, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. Ah, uh, let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. All right. Well, as we cruise right on through it, friends, how about that armor of God every single day, friends, no matter what. All right. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Let's go ahead and read that. Now, finally, my brothers and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that uh, ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual places, uh, or wickedness, in high places. That's right. Now wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand an evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, let's get that note taken care of and squared up. Well, let's go to the next verse here. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which we know is the word of God. Uh, amen. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly, friends, uh, to make known the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that that their enemy speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. And there you go, friends. Right off the press, hot off the press, the Word of God. Amen. Our podcast notes, I switch notes here. Uh, in the studio, lots to cover today, my friends. All right. That's our opening notes, as I always like to share and do. Uh, so, yeah, we are going to cover some scriptures, friends, lots of scriptures today. So I hope you're ready for church. Um, now, I do want to go. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're kind of I think we're going to go. No, we'll just go right into the uh, into the series of repentance, a message for the church, friends. We're going to go ahead and look at that first, and then I will go backtrack to uh, John 15 through, uh, what is it, uh, or 14 through 17. Uh, that is the main focus, or part of the main focus on this on the message here. So I want to get right into it, friends. No time to waste. Again, thank you guys for being so patient this week and uh, coming on back. Now, again, I'm going to try to reset a whole week's worth of podcast up uh, Monday to Sunday. So, or Sunday, because I think I've got tomorrow set up. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, let me look at my channel uh, real quick here. Uh, I have tomorrow late night set up on Restream again. Uh, so, I'm either going to leave that there or change that out, or we'll just do a double shot of Restream TV, because I was last on StreamYard. So we'll we'll start out fresh. We'll do restream tonight and uh, or today right now, uh, and then we will go ahead and leave up Sunday services uh, for uh, tomorrow on restream again. We'll just have that church service there, and I'll see if I can go live there, uh, and then I'll post out and fix up the rest of the week from Sunday to Sunday uh, on the broadcast. 
Now, again, I did get a chance to get uh, Melon TV taken care of. Uh, there was a little bit of issue with that. So, um, but we'll, we'll try. We'll see what happens uh, in the next few weeks here. So let's get to it. Again, I hope you have your notes with you, friends. Because, uh, like I said, this is exciting, uh, exciting message. I got this by permission. Um, it was done a long, long time ago in the 70s, I believe. But uh, I got permission uh, from uh, Rodney Francis in Australia. Of uh, you know, so as I was back then, I was kind of uh, not in '71, but uh, as I was uh, starting out on the podcast, uh, I was searching and praying for something, and I I stumbled upon this. I got uh, contact and emailed and then called physically on the phone. Uh, and got, uh, you know, it was used by permission. So I like to bring this out every once in a while to remind the churches and the pastors out there, stay on the straight and narrow. Don't stray off. God's going to get you one way or the other. He'll correct you and put you in your, you know, he'll he'll put you in your spot uh, and uh, correct, uh, you know, correct you. So, and I have to remind myself that too. As I'm preaching, as I'm, uh, you know, shepherding, I have to remind myself, keep myself in line, uh, friends. And, and, and you know, those of us that are out there doing this, we we're going to be judged a lot harsher uh, and and a lot more critical. Uh, and so we have to be reminded every once in a while to stay in our lane, stay in our focus. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to pop this up. We're going to bring it up, friends. Repentance, a message for the churches, Christians, pastors out there. Uh, that have gone astray, my friend. So let's dig into it. Take notes. Uh, again, thank you guys for being so patient here and uh, hanging out, friends. So let's let's dig into this word. Uh, amen. All right. So again, the title is Repentance, a Message for the Church. Let's get right into it. Now, in a day when so much is heard uh, in the church about revival, we must not overlook the fact that true revival will never come until first there is a spirit of repentance in the lives of Christians. Now, the Holy Spirit will never enter into the flesh, nor will he glorify the works of man, but he does move wherever there is a true spirit of repentance in the hearts of his people. Now, uh, part B here, number B, or letter B, I guess, here. Uh, one of the tragedies of this hour <clears throat> is that there are too many people professing. And here it is. Oh, don't get mad. Just reflect and, and look at where we're at. He says here, uh, there's too many people professing to be Christians who cannot discern, church, uh, the difference between the flesh life and the Holy Spirit. And wherever this is, so you will never find true repentance. So A1 here, The uh, now we're going to go back into biblical proof here, biblical evidence. Uh, friends, give me a second. Let me, I didn't realize that page was torn up here. All right, we want to make sure we don't lose nothing here because uh, that's not good, right? So uh, let's see. See, that's not good either. Let's fix. Let's fix these notes. I thought I had everything taken care of, but apparently I, I missed a spot. So I'm going to correct that right now while I'm staring at it and uh, see if I can't get this taken care of here. So this is. Uh, I kind of lettered this out A, B, uh, and C in the numbers here. So I put this as A one, uh, friends. So let me take care of this and uh, see what I've got going on the rest of the notes here. I did go back and correct it, so it should be okay, uh, friends. So we're going to go back and see if I can fix that. So uh, again, hang on. I just thought I had this <laughs> squared up, and apparently I didn't. So uh, we're going to fix this. So we're going to talk uh, about Jonah uh, which we I just did the podcast on that previously, uh, and Nineveh, the people of Nineveh. Let's check this out. Uh, amen. So let me, let me see what I got here. 
Lots of notes in this one. This was a, a lot to cover. But I like it, and it's, uh, it's so awesome, friends. So let's get into that. Let's keep going. Let's roll with this one. So the people of Nineveh in the days of Jonah were a people that could not discern themselves uh, between uh, the right hand and their left hand, friends. Uh, Jonah 4.11 on that one. You guys can read that. Now, yet when they heard the word of the Lord, not in the letter, they really repented. Uh, they were a heathen people and had never had any spiritual upbringing. They were worshipped, uh, or they worshipped idols, friends, but uh, knew nothing of the true and living God. They lived according to the flesh and nothing else, yet were Jonah, uh, where Jonah went, uh, to them by the word uh, of the Lord, they heard and they believed and repented with all their hearts. Jonah chapter 3, uh, fasted, prayed, and cried almighty unto God, and God heard them from uh, the, let's see, from the promised judgment. All right, let's move on here. Now, more than 120,000 people were that day delivered because they were saved. And poor Jonah, as we know, uh, gets blamed for a lot of things. But if you look, friends, uh, let's see. If uh, if you look at his uh, lately, right, or at his life lately. There it is. I have to make sure I get the notes right. Uh, correctly. Oh, where is it at? There it is. Uh, sleeping monitors. Uh, so, again, doesn't change. So, if you look at it correctly, you will see that he was probably the most successful evangelist in the Bible. And he preached a message that never came to pass. Let's put that around there. Now, we're going to shift and we're going to go to the people of Israel, friends. So, let us compare church the Ninevites of Jonah's day with the Israelites of Jesus's day uh, now there is a message here for the church Jonah went to an absolute heathen people yet at the word of God they repented and got right with the Lord the word made flesh now come unto his own and his own received him not so let's go to the next part now the pre-existent word and that is over in john 7. like i said we're going to cover uh, a few chapters here in the book of john uh now israel had been trying to self-effort to follow the true and living god for generations they were not ignorant heathens like the people of nineveh yet spiritually they were just the same all right, so Nineveh was evil and adulterous. So was Israel. Now, Israel was bound and bound by her religious tra traditions, uh, the custom or customs, by the letter of the law. Uh, so much so that when the Messiah, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, uh, came preaching the gospel of the kingdom, uh, the word of the Lord, his message was a message of repentance. But Israel would not repent. She trusted in her own self-righteousness. Even Nicodemus, as learned as he was in the Jews' religion, uh, as he says here, let me get my cord unwrapped because I am trapped around there. There it is. Uh, the repentancy. His, uh, as I look at it, I'm trying to get this cord out of the way here. All right, give me a second. There it is. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's backtrack just a little bit. So when the Messiah, Jesus Christ, uh, came preaching uh, the gospel of the kingdom, uh, of the, of the uh, word of the Lord, his message was a message of repentance. But Israel, again, would not repent, friends. Now, she trusted in her own self-righteousness. Even Nicodemus, as learned as he was in the Jews' tradition or religion, revealed in his conversation with Jesus, as we know, 
that really uh, he was as ignorant as the Ninevites regarding the days of the Holy Spirit, John 3, 1 through 12 there. So, as, he, as we know, you must be born again, friends. And Jesus told him he had to be born again by the Holy Spirit. we got some more scriptures for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 as we move on. Now, as we get into uh, part 3 here, number 3, discerning the sign. Now, in Jesus' day, the Israelites were always seeking a sign after a sign as we clearly see in the end times now. All these miracles, all the situation we see, and yet some still don't believe or mock it or, you know, uh, and don't believe it. So watch, watch this. So they always seek it a sign after a sign. And the only sign he gave them was Jonah, or as the Torah says, Yonah. Now, that's uh, going to be over Luke eleven twenty nine through 31 on that side of Scripture. So as we continue and see here, friends, it seems that Israel never accepted Jonah as a prophet of God. For they believe that no prophet arose out of Galilee. Uh, John seven fifty two on that one. So yet Jonah came from Gath Hephar in Galilee. All right, 2 Kings 14, 25 for that one. And so did Jesus of Nazareth of Galilee, Matthew 2, 23. So, number four, God has sent two rejected prophets as signs to the people. Now, watch this, friends, and I mark this letter A. Uh, Jonah was the sign of the Ninevites. The world outside of the knowledge of God. And Jesus is the sign to the Israelites, the church, the Ninevites who had never before heard the gospel repented when they heard it. But Israel, uh, who had the very law of God to follow the generation or four generations, even though at the time of Jesus it was only lip service as again clear signs as we see here friends it was lip service uh when they heard the gospel and the power of the holy spirit by the master himself they would not believe and they did not repent and jesus was a far greater prophet than jonah ever was all right now we're going to shift a little bit to number five we're talking about samson here friends now, because Samson got away, watch this connection here, friends. Samson got away from walking uh, according to the power of the Holy Spirit by yielding to fleshly desires. He lost his ability to discern between uh, the lies and the Spirit, friends. Now, the Bible records, but he did not know uh, that the Lord had departed from him. Judges 16, verse 20 on that. Uh, let's see. Uh, again, talking about Samson and Delilah here. Now, he got so mixed up in the ways of the flesh that he did not know when God had left him. Uh, an Israelite who had known the power of the Holy Spirit uh, in his life, then lost out because he failed to keep walking in the Spirit. There was only one way to escape for Samson or repentance, as we know. Thank God he did repent, church. There you go. So, uh, as we continue, this is going to be number six here. Judgment comes to the non-repentant, friends. So, in the days of Jesus the majority of the Israelites would not repent. They would not yield to the way of the Spirit. And Stephen described them as stiff-necked or uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. Uh, so do you. So as we look at uh, Stephen's defense here, Acts 7.51 for that. 
All right, let's uh, let's continue. Now, what was the word of Jesus to that people who refused to repent? At God's living word. Uh, Jesus pointed Israel to the day of judgment. He said, the men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with the generation and condemn it for they repented, friends, at the preaching of Jonah. Or again, as it says in the Torah, Yonah. Uh, all right, so they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And indeed, a greater than Jonah is here, Luke eleven thirty two. So, in in Matthew's gospel, friends, we see uh, say it says it this way. Uh, as we get the notes together, now then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, "Teacher, we want to see a sign from you." But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign, watch this, the sign of the prophet Jonah, or Jonah. Uh, as Jonah was there, uh, was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, as we know, uh, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. Uh, Matthew twelve thirty eight through 41 on that. Now, at the judgment, uh, friends, the repentant Nineveh, of Jonah's day shall condemn the unrepentant Israel of Jesus' days, uh, or day, uh, all Israel's religious observances and the keeping of their Sabbath days will not help them one bit. All right. Now, again, as we go into the next part here, they refused the Lord, friends. The scripture warns us, see that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they do not escape, who refuse, uh, refuse him. Now again, watch this, friends. Pay attention to this. This is really like a vital message here. Uh, some, some of us have just strayed away from, from the focus of what, what we, you know, what, what's important here. So watch this. So anyway, let's uh, look at it. He spoke on earth much more. He shall not escape who refused. If we uh, not escape it, uh, if we turn away from, uh, let's see, from he who speaks from heaven. All right, Hebrews 12, 25. So let's go back over that again. It sounded a little bit confusing. It sounded like there's some words missing, but we'll, let's go back over this. So uh, who spoke on earth much more Shall we need uh, we not escape who refused? If we not escape, if we turn away from he who speaks from heaven. All right. And again, that's over in Hebrews 12, 25 there. So renew your spiritual life, church. Uh, the absolute importance of the Holy Spirit as we get into this. Today, the big issue is not what church you belong to or what religious festivals you observe but are you church ask yourself this question are you walking in the spirit friends and again my friends you need to ask yourself that question are we walking in the spirit right all right so let's move on uh let's, uh, let's see so if you ask yourself, this Christianity is like, uh, let's get to some other notes here. So that's the question you got to ask yourself. So uh, as Christianity is life in the spirit, we can only know the things of God by the spirit of God. First uh, Corinthians 2, 1 through 16 there. There is no other way Jesus taught that it was to our advantage that he go back to the Father so he could send the Holy Spirit Comforter to us 
of the Holy Spirit's ministry within us is too. Again, I had to spend a little time uh, rewriting the notes here because I got so sidetracked. I don't know what what happened on these notes, but I tell you, it was uh, quite a bit of uh, work to do here. Again, I don't mind. Uh, it's never complaining. You know, it means I just get to uh, have some time in the Bible here. All right, bear with me while I'm doing some correction here. I wanted to make sure that got fixed. So let's move on. 1 Corinthians 2, 6, 2 1 through 16 is the next verse. So uh, again, as we go back on this, now the Holy Spirit's ministry within us is to convict the world of sin. That's uh, It's going to be 1 through 3 on this one, but I'll explain that in a minute here. Convict the world of sin uh, and of righteousness and of judgment of sin. Uh, or judgment. So, as we look at this, uh, again, one, uh, of sin, because they do not believe in me. Uh, two, of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. And of three, judgment, because the ruler of this world, or the devil as we see and know, uh, is judged. I still have many things to say to you. Ah, uh, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, the Holy Spirit, uh, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he uh, will tell you of things to come. He will glorify me, uh, for he will take of what is mine, and let me correct that spot there. Bear with me. All right. Um, let's see. And declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Uh, therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you, friends. Uh, John 16, 1 through 33 for that. So, here it is, friends. Watch this. If we are not walking in the Holy Spirit, then no matter how uh, religious oops, uh, or spiritual we may think we are, there is a need for repentance in our hearts. That's a big one there. All right. And God cannot use us if we lie or not walking in the Spirit. And revival comes when people, or God's people, begin to walk in the Spirit. And where God's people are found, walking in the Holy Spirit, there you will find true repentance. Now, the church does not need no more programs, friends. Don't get mad. It's true. We, we don't need no more programs in the church or entertainment or gimmicks uh, to hold the people, friends. Don't get, don't get upset. It's all right. Uh, it needs a sweeping revival by the power of the Holy Spirit set down from heaven, a revival that will come as each one individually will truly repent and let the blessed Holy Spirit take full control of our lives, friends. Right there, what a powerful message. And... In conclusion, if we will, he will, friends. Again, I uh, kind of extra little side notes here. So, uh, amen. God bless his word to your heart, church. Amen and amen. All right. So, that's it for that. I got a lot more kind of extra loose uh, scriptures there or notes. <coughs> um, uh I think uh let's see if that's uh let's see. I think there might be a little extra recap uh on this uh friends here. Maybe we'll go over that. So let's continue, give it a little bit more here. Uh as Jesus teaches about uh prayer, and I'll throw some scriptures your way. Luke eleven twenty nine thirty three. And when the people were gathered thick together he began to say, this is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it, 
with the sign of Jonah, the prophet. So let's continue a minute here. Uh, For as Jonah was a sign of the Ninevites, so shall the Son of Man be to this generation. Now the queen of the south uh, shall rise up in the judgment uh, with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Again, we know that story. uh, It's here, there. Uh, the men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, the greater the Jonah is here. And no, and then it goes into some extra side scriptures here. Uh, no man, when he lighted a candle, as we know, uh, putteth uh, in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they... Uh, Let's see, that they, uh, which came in, may see the light. And there you go, friends. That's a wrap up on that. A repentance a message for the church. And that is our Sunday, or not Sunday. <laughs> it's our Sabbath message there, friends. I wanted to get into that. Like I said, I had so much problems and so many just unbelievable issues and problems uh, this whole week. And like I said, kind of healing up from a heart attack last weekend, uh, or maybe it was the weekend before, but uh, I've had some real issues with muscles and, uh, or my my uh, muscles in my arm. Uh, numb, just a lot of numbness going on. And that's, you know, it's tough to sit for a couple hours and try to do that. But uh, I've been working on it. I've been exercising, you know. Uh, and uh, healing up, so I I have to have that authority. Well, I have the authority, but I have to have that uh, you know that belief that I am going to get healed. I am going to get through this. And uh, again, thank you guys for all your prayers and your uh, patience here with the podcast. Uh, try to get back on that. We're going to start all over again, start fresh. Uh, we got this one. I'll get this one out to you, and then I've got uh, tomorrow night listed out. So we'll see how things go and. I'll uh, schedule some more out, so we'll get back on track between Restream TV and StreamYard, and of course some audio uh, thrown in there as well. I uh, try to double up. I want that's the plan. Uh, we'll see how it goes, but that's uh, the battle plan this week is to try to double up on some podcast time there. So get that word out. So anyway, there you go. That's uh, quite a powerful scripture or uh, message there. All right, let's get to John chapter 14 through 17, friends. I want to do that. Let's uh, scoot up here. Again, same old issues, same old problems. Uh, Seat broken, chair broken, (laughs) monitors broken. You know, I'm like, you you just, it's one of them things where you don't know whether to just laugh or cry or just sit still. And my option is, option C, sit still, pray, pray have my cup of coffee, read my Bible, and put my armor on. It, 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 what are you going to do, right? Oh, anyway, church, I'm still here. I haven't gone anywhere. I've just kind of recovered and getting some rest for, uh, you know, for everything, all the physical stuff that's been going on. And, of course, you know, all the other, all the other stuff that's happening here in the studio. I'm, I'm fighting through it, friends. All right. Uh, hey, man, checking notes. I got the tablet running. We're live on Tin Can again for the 10th of the month. Can you believe that, friends? We're already flying through the month of February. That's amazing. Well, let's get to some reading, as we always like to do here, friends. Pastor Rick, Ministry Podcast Network. Again, a little after... 3.20 now, already an hour, about an hour or so into the podcast. A couple hours, two and a half hours, I never know. Uh, but uh, lots to cover. And then, like I said, I'm going to have this posted out on all the channels. And I'll do a live update over on uh, Twitch TV. And, of course, this podcast will get uh, reposted on all the channels. I'll send them out to all the uh, all the channels there, of course, with everybody there. Uh, all the Facebook groups, as I always do. Uh, Pastor Ina over there, and uh, um, 
Uh, let's see. So we got uh, Pastor Ina, of course, at uh, Church of God's Children. And then we've got uh, Brother Mark and Pamela uh, on that group there. So. All right. Uh, bear with me, you guys. Just double checking messages here. Um, okay, so let's go on. Uh, again, kind of <laughs> rattling there, but I uh, want to send shout outs to everybody. And of course, my little sisters. Uh, bless you, my kids. Amen. All right, uh, let's check it out. Let's move on. How about, uh, again, uh, in, the, in some words here, in John 14, uh, friends, I want to go to John 14 through 17. Let's go ahead and read that, as that ties in to uh, repentance, a message for the church, which we did. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for hanging out, Pastor Rick there. Uh, okay, so let's go on down to chapter 14 to 17 here in the book of John. That'll be our next opening, our set of scriptures here. All right, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. John 14, 27, for that side note, friends. Again, Peter, uh, to deny Jesus, and a comforter will come, as we know. Uh, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, John 13, 23. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, church, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, and let's get those notes uh, unscattered there. Uh, if ye had known me, Ye should have known my father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have sent him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the father, and it sufficeth us. And Jesus saith unto him, I have been, uh, let's see, have I been so long with you? Again, watch this, friends. We know this. We see this. Uh, I, I have been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father, and now sayest thou then, shew us the Father. John 12, 45, Hebrews 1, 3. Uh, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Uh, believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake, friends. And verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Matthew twenty-one, twenty-one on the side scripture there. Uh, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you, uh, Let's see, let's go on to 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And that's going to be over in John 14, 21. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, uh, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of the truth, whom the world cannot receive. Uh, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with, with you, and uh, shall be in vain. And there you go on that. Uh, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet in a little while the world seeth me no more, but ye seeth me, because I live. Ye shall live also. And at that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. John 10, 38, for that one. 
uh, all at that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me. And I knew, again, kind of repeating that. Again, John 10, 38 for that side scripture there. Let's go on to 21. Uh, he says here, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. And Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, as we know. How is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? And Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him and will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word uh, which ye hear is not mine, but the father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, having yet present or present with you. But, as we know, the uh, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. But whatsoever I have said unto you, uh, we got two of them on this one. Luke 24, 49, 1 John 2, 20 for that. Watch this, friends, only from the Spirit, only from Father God. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give with you. Uh, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 3, 1 for that. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, Ah, uh, you would rejoice because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Uh, in 29, and now I told you before it came to pass that when it comes to pass, you might believe, right? Hereafter, I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh, or we know as the devil again. Give me a minute. My channel went out. There it is. Give me a second. Uh, bear with me here. There it is. All right. Sleeping monitors never changes, right? We never, it never gets, uh, fi well, I haven't fixed it yet. I haven't figured out how to do that. So, uh, anyway, let's keep rolling. So in 29, and now I have told you before it come to pass that when it come to pass, you might believe. Now hereafter again, 30. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Again, we know the devil, the old devil dude, right? All up in our grill, for goodness sakes. All right, 31. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do, arise, let us go hence. And we're going to move on to 15, chapter 15 here in the book of John, friends. As we know, the uh, true vine, right? Uh, the true vine and the uh, the vine. The vine and the vine. The vine dresser. <laughs> Amen. So it says in 15 here, John, uh, chapter 15, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring uh, forth much fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Colossians 1, 23. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, uh, the same bringeth forth much fruit, uh, for without me ye can do nothing. Friends, right there in verse 5. Let's move on to 6. If a man abideth not in me, is cast forth, or cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. That's Matthew 3.10. Uh, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Matthew 5.16 
uh, as the Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. Continue ye in my love, friends. Now, if you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, uh, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Now, these things have I spoken it, or spoken, uh, unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full, friends. Now, there is my, or this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you, John 13, 34. And greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends, John 10, 11. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Uh, henceforth I call you not servants. Again, this was uh, a long time ago. I tried to say this in a church service or something, uh, that we were just servants. Well, watch this. Henceforth I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. Uh, but I have called you friends. Let's see here. Uh, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Genesis 18, 17 and Acts 20, 27, friends, for that one. All right, let's move on to 16. Yeah, now watch this. This is this one, I talk about this all the time. I, this is why I do what I do. E even with the gaps and all the problems and all the issues and all the technical problems and all the fights and everything I have with this, uh, this verse is what really gets me going here. He says here in 16, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. Uh, let's see. You should go forth and bring, uh, or go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in thy name, he may give it you. And these things I commanded you, uh, you that you love one another. If the world hates you, again, watch this, check this out. Ye know that it hated me before it hated you. I mean, it don't make it any easier, but, you know, we got that. The world hates us. It hated, you know, as it says here, it hated you. You know that it hated me before it hated you. All right, bear with me. Hold that thought. Tin can. You got your first hour in Pastor Rick Ministry Podcast Network for Saturday, the 10th of February. Started this podcast about 2.30 in the afternoon, live on the air studio way here. Good to be here. See you soon on the next broadcast, friends. Thank you so much. All right, let's see. Got to get that out there on the Tin Can channel. Check it out. Scope it out, my friends. All right, let's roll on. We're in our first hour still, like I said, probably another 45, 55 minutes here uh, for this podcast. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So let's play it by ear. Let's get some more coffee. Uh, you know the coffee isn't going to change here, friends, right? Amen. In a cool 43 degrees, there's your quick weather update uh, on this end of the state there. Appreciate y'all dropping by the studio here. Uh, <laughs> how you guys doing, <laughs> by the way? What's going on, friends? I hope you guys are doing well. Always praying for you. Uh, and I thank you guys for your prayers and your patience here, of course, on the, on the channel here. Lots going on. Uh, like I said, lots going on. I'm still kind of battling the same battle, same things. I uh, had a little uh, little doubt bout. <laughs> I don't think I can do this. I said, yeah, I can. I got this. God's got it. I got it. We're going to be okay. So anyway, the self-doubts, we always get those, you know, in the flesh we get those. And uh, we got to turn it over to God, friends, you know. Amen. All right. So we're going to keep rolling. Uh, tin can. Got that rolled out there on that feed. That is live right now. And available, friends. Amen. That, that first hour podcast there. That's always awesome. Amen. All right. So that's good to go. All right, well, there you go. You guys check that out on the Tin Can channel. 
Let's go to the next one, friends, in verse 19 here, John uh, 15 here. So if we were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. So he says and tells us, be ye separate. And then let's cut that down. Oh, by the way, I'm still working on the IMVU channel uh, schedule. I don't know when I'm going to get on there. I um, appreciate the opportunity. I just don't know when I'm going to get a chance to get live on there. But we'll see again. Uh, all based on our Wi-Fi here. So pray for the Wi-Fi, if you will. Friends. Amen. All right. So he tells us in verse 19, he says, Therefore, be ye separate, friends. And we're going to read that right now. Words of warning uh, in 20. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than the Lord, or than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, who will also persecute you. Uh, if they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Ezekiel 3, 7 and Luke 6, 40. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Matthew 10, 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sinned. But now they have no cloak or no cover for their sin. Let's go to 23 uh, as we look here. Now he that hateth me hateth my father also, 1 John 2.23. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not, uh, had, not had sin. But how? Have they both seen and hated both me and my father? John 3, 2. But this come at the past, the word might be fulfilled, that it is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. And 26, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the father, even the spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the father, he shall testify of me. 27 and ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning friends there you go on that uh luke 1 2 now let's go over to john uh john chapter 16 right uh amen all right now these things have i spoken unto you that you should not be offended matthew eleven six. Uh, they shall put you out of the synagogues. That's why I get my scrabbled notes here. Uh, yea, the time cometh. What, uh, let's see, let, let me see if I can kind of read through my notes here. Uh, what whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's uh, service. John, uh, let's see, John 9.22. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time uh, shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. Uh, Matthew 9.15 But now I go my way to him that sent me. <clears throat> All right, uh, and none of you ask of me, right? Let's see, whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. John 14, 1. And nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. So if you look at this, he says, if I don't go away, the comforter won't uh, come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you, friends. Uh, and uh, eight here, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment as we just read in the uh, repentance of message for the church. So uh, as he as he continues here, a uh, ten of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, and eleven of judgment because the prince of this world is judged again the devil, uh, as we see. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Uh, Mark four thirty three for that. Howbeit. 
when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you to all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that uh, he shall, uh, let's see, she, he shall he speak, right? Or that shall he speak. I will shew you things to come, John fourteen seventeen. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and uh, shall shew it unto you, Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. And a little while, and you shall not see me, and again a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. John seven thirty three for that. Ah, uh, then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is that he saith unto us a little while, and ye shall not see me? And again a little while, and ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father, uh, they said, Therefore, what is this that he saith a little while? We cannot tell what he saith. 19, now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto him, or them, do ye inquire among uh, yourselves of that I said a little while, and you shall not see me, and again a little while, and you shall see me? Uh, 20, verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice that ye shall be sorrowful, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned unto joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish, friends, for joy that a man is born into the world, Isaiah twenty six seventeen, And ye... Now, therefore, have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no, no man taketh from you. Luke twenty four forty one. In that day ye shall ask me nothing. Give me a second. Let's see. All right. Ah, uh, whatsoever ye shall ask in the Father of my name, uh, ask the Father of my name, he will give it you. All right, 24, hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name, ask and ye shall receive, right? That your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak, and let's get those notes there, uh, unto you in Proverbs, um, but I shall shew you plainly of the Father, or parables as we know, uh, 26, at that day you shall ask in my name, and uh, I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. But the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, for the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. Again, as we repeat 27 there, I just want to go over that again. John 3.13 for that side note. 28, let's look at that. I came forth from the Father, and am come the world, uh, came, let's see, came into the world, or come into the world again. I leave the world and go. To the Father. Now his disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb uh, or parable. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest uh, not that any man should ask thee. But this we believe that thou camest forth from God. John 17, 8. And Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Uh, 32, Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. Uh, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Of these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Again, clear, friends, really clear here. 
ye shall have tribulation. Uh, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Isaiah 9, 6, Romans 5, 1 for that. Powerful, powerful verses. Friends. I tell you, you've got to get into this word. All right, 17, friends. Chapter 17, the book of John here. As we continue our afternoon podcast uh, message here. Amen. Let's uh, go ahead and straighten the clipboard out. That always uh, kind of gets in the way there and gets in, gets in some troubles there. And there went my pen, but that's okay. I got a backup right here. So, again, it's just little things that happen. All right. Uh, so, yeah, 17. Let's just go ahead and read that because uh, the pen's down that way. I, I'm not even going to bother with it. I, I got a backup right in my hand and another backup right here just in case. So, anyway, 17, the book of John here. Now, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven, friends. And said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. Uh, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Uh, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, uh, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Uh, Isaiah 53, uh, and that's going to be 11, verse 11. Now I have glorified thee on the earth, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee the world uh, before the world was, John 1, 1 there. All right, I have uh, have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest out of the world. Thine they were, All right? And thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Psalm twenty two twenty two, verse 7. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And they have received them, and have known surely that I come out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst sent me, or send me, that's John 8, 28, and 9, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, I, and all are uh, all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Uh, John 16, verse 15 for that one, friends, right there. Uh, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to be, Holy Father, keep uh, through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one uh, as we are. That's going to be over John 1, 21, 1 Peter 1, 5 for that. Let's move that Bible on over there so I can see what I'm reading here, church. Amen. All right. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost. Uh, but the son of perdition, uh, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come, I go thee. Or to thee, and these things I speak, uh, let's see, in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. That's John 8, 16 for that. All right, brace up. I told you we got a lot to talk about, a lot of Bible scriptures here, church, a lot of stuff to look at, because, uh, again, I'm make, trying to make up for the last eight days of not being on the air here, but uh, glad uh, glad to be here and, uh, you know, feeling a little bit better, enough to, enough to sit up and talk to you guys for a couple hours here. Uh, probably be close to two hours uh, on this one uh, again, as always, so. Uh, amen. All right, so let's keep going. We got verse 15 here in 17, John 17. So I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, 
but thou shouldest ban uh, thou shouldest ban them from the evil. Matthew six thirteen. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. The word or thy word is truth. All right. Um, let's see. Second Samuel seven twenty eight in eighteen. Uh, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have all. Uh, let's see. Uh, so have I also sent them into the world. For their sake, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. And neither pray I for these uh, alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that uh, they also may be one in us, and the world uh, may believe that thou hast sent me. All right, uh, let's let's go to 22 here. And the glory uh, which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. I and them, and thou and me, that thou may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them. As thou hast loved me, that's Colossians 3.14. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me uh, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world, John 4, 5. O righteous Father, the world hath not known me, but I have known thee, and these have, uh, let's see, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Oh, what a great scripture, friends. What a great set. I know that's a long-winded set of scriptures, but I had to put that in there for this message, uh, which made sense. So there it is, John 14 to 17. Uh, what do we got? Oh, we're still, we, we still got plenty of time here, friends, on this podcast this afternoon. Uh, again, almost 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, let's go to the phone there, message phone. Uh, amen. All right, let's see what's going on with that. All right, uh, okay, let's go ahead and go over there and uh, just kind of double-checking messages. Let's go to our next set of scriptures. We got Proverbs, friends, 27, 1 through 27 on that. So let's go ahead and jump on over to that one. Uh, if I can find it here, go back over through the Bible here and check that out. So we're going to Proverbs uh, 27. Uh, as I kind of dig through my Bible here to find out where it's at. Uh, so, yeah, Proverbs 27. We want that. So there it is. Uh, Proverbs 27, 1 through 27. Let's go ahead and read that and check that out on this afternoon's podcast, friends. Good to be with you. Amen. Okay, uh, so 27 in the book of Proverbs. Let's go ahead and check that out. Now, boast not thyself of tomorrow, he says, right there. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth, a stranger, and not thine own lips. A stone is heavy, and the sand weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than them both. Wrath is cruel, and anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? Open rebuke is better than secret love, Proverbs 28, 23. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. The foul or is full, soul loatheth and honeycomb. But to the hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet. As a bird that wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. 
Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart, so doth the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty course or counsel. Not course, counsel. All right, thine own friend, thine father's friend, forsake not, neither go into thy brother's house in the day of thy calamity. For better is a neighbor that is near than a brother far off. My son be wise and my heart glad that I may answer him that reproacheth me. Psalm 127, 5. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Take his garment that is surety for a stranger and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. He that blesseth his father with a loud voice rising early in the morning, it shall be counted a curse to him. Uh, a continual dropping in a very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. Proverbs 19.13 And as we look at iron sharpens iron, friends. Whosoever hideth her, her uh, hideth the wind and the ointment of his right hand, which berayeth itself. As we know in 17, iron sharpeneth iron so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fi uh, fruit thereof bear, bear with me guys all right uh let's see so in 18 whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof so uh he that waiteth on his master shall be honored uh, 19, as in water, face answereth to face, so the heart of man to man. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. Proverbs 30, 16, and Habakkuk 2, 5. As the fining pot for silver and the furnace for gold, so is a man to his praise. Proverbs 17, verse 3. Though in 22, let's look at that in Proverbs here. Uh, again, Proverbs 27. Uh, thou, or though thou shouldest bray a fool in a mortar among wheat with a pestle, yet will not his foolishness depart from him. And be thou diligent to know uh, the state of thy flocks, and look well to thy herds. For riches are not forever and doth the crown endure to every generation? Uh, the hay appeareth, and the tender grass sheweth itself, and herbs of the mountains are gathered. The lambs are for thy clothing, and the goats are the price of the field. And thou shalt have goats, milk enough for thy food, and the food for thy household, and for the maintenance of thy maidens friends right there all right good stuff always uh good to be in the book of proverbs for sure uh amen friends all right we're going to go on down to revelation like i said we're going to jump through some scriptures on this one i want to make up for try, try to make up for the week anyway so let's go on back to the back end of the bible let's go check out uh the book of revelation uh my friends and uh check that out and I believe we're in 15, Revelation 15 again here. We're going to kind of go back, kind of backtrack just a little bit on that. Uh, amen. So let's look at that. Oh, man. All right, 15 to 17. Lots to, lots to look at in that one, uh, as there always is. So let's go Revelation 15 uh, to 17. Like I said, I just got a few more scriptures. We'll probably do two hours. Uh, at least as close as possible to that because I want to kind of make up for what I've missed here. Uh, so as I'm kind of watching the monitors and watching the clocks a little bit here, we're going to just keep rolling right on through. Uh, amen. I appreciate you guys dropping by the studios. Always glad to be here with you live on Restream TV, Spreaker, and more. Finished up that first hour live on Tin Can this afternoon's uh, on this afternoon's podcast. Uh, you're in that four o'clock hour, top of the hour, friends. Good to be here with you, Pastor Rick Ministry Podcast Network. Let's go on and roll on here with some extra scripture or more scriptures, actually, 
not really extra, just part of the uh, part of the the uh, schedule here. As I once again, oh there it is. All right, I lose my little clip uh, on the clipboard for the scriptures there, the notes. Uh, so yeah, Revelation 15 to 17 here. Let's go ahead and check that out. And uh, like I said, like we always do here, lots of reading, uh, verse by verse, scripture by scripture, and of course, book by book in the Word. All right. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, as we look at Revelation 15 to 17 here. Now, seven angels having uh, the seven last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of of God. Now watch this, Revelation 12, 1, the seven vials of God's wrath. And I saw, as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, uh, and over the number of his name, standing or stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Matthew 3:11. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, and the true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Exodus 15, 1. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? Uh, for thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded uh, with golden girdles. Exodus 28 verse uh, 6 there. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels Seven golden vials full of the wrath of God who liveth forever and ever. First Thessalonians 1 9. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. Now let's go on to Revelation chapter 16 for this one here, friends. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your way and pour out, or go your ways, and pour out the vials of the wrath of God and the, are upon the earth. Revelation 14.10 And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and griefsome sore upon the men, which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Exodus 9.9 9. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it came as the blood of the dead men. And every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art of us that shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and of prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. Revelation 13.10 And the fourth uh, angel, as we see here, the fourth angel. Uh, let me get that fixed up here, because that looks like it kind of cuts off the message there, and it's not supposed to do that. That is one solid set of messages there. All right. Always correcting and uh, checking it out. So he says, uh, let's see. So, and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, that's going to be all the way over in Revelation 8, verse 12, church, on that. So let's go get that up there. If I can, having a battle with my bookmarks as always. All right, and men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. That's uh, Daniel 5, 22 for that. 
And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was uh, full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds, Revelation 16.2. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water Again, I, we saw this in uh, just recently, this, this thing, you know, right here, in the, uh, it says in 12, and the sixth angel poured out his vial uh, upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, right? Uh, let's see, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. That's Isaiah 41, 2. Clear signs of the end times here. Uh, in 13, and I saw... Three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, 1 John 4, 1. For there are the spirits of the devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Now behold, in 15, I come as a thief, blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. Matthew 4, uh, 24, 43. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Uh, and the seventh angel poured out his vial unto the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. Revelation 21, 6. Uh, and there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, as we are again clearly seeing, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty uh, an earthquake, and so great. All right, 19, and the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, uh, and great Babylon came in remembrance from, uh, before God to give unto, the, uh, unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away and the, fountain, or the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of, uh, out of heaven and every stone about the weight of a talent and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail. And the plague thereof was exceeding great. Exodus 9.23 And we're going to go to chapter 17 in Revelation here. And there came uh, one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto, unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great horror that sitteth upon many waters. Uh, with whom the kings of the earth had committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Uh, so he carried me away in the spirit under the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was uh, arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious uh, stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornications. Uh, of fornication, uh, Jeremiah 51, 7. And upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Uh, six, and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, uh, I wondered with great admiration. That's going to be over in Revelation 6, 9. And the angel said unto me, Where didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. Uh, and eight, and the beast that uh, thou sawest was and is not, uh, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life 
from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was it is or is not and yet is right all right uh let's see lots of stuff coming through the tablet there on line eight i believe or six i'm gonna have to mark that down put that uh, on a file there all right uh amen so that's revelation 11 7 uh, and nine and here's the mind let's see and here's the mind which hath wisdom the seven heads and seven mountains uh, on which the women sitteth, uh, Revelation 13, 1. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one, if you're doing the math here, uh, one is and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seventh and go into perdition. Twelve and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as of yet or as yet, but receive power as kings. Uh, one hour with the beast. Daniel 7.20. Friends, right there. Uh, all right. Now, 14, these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and King of kings. Uh, and they that are with him are called and chosen, and, here's the key, are faithful, friends, right there. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the horse setteth, are peoples, uh, are peoples and multitudes, nations, and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Second Thessalonians 2.11 for that side scripture, friends. All right, let's go to 18. And the woman... Which thou sawest, uh, let me get these straightened out. That is always a mess with the bookmarks here. Sorry about that, friends. All right. Um, always a challenge trying to straighten these out. Uh, thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. There you go. Revelation, friends. Digging into the book of Revelation. And that was uh, 15 to 17 there, friends, by the way, if you missed that one. Just coming in. Thank you guys on the replay viewers. Of course, I always appreciate everybody on here, the new subscribers. That's awesome. Thank you guys again for your support. Uh, amen. How awesome. All right. Got a few more for you. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what time we got rolling on here. But uh, I'll just uh, kind of roll through what we got. And uh, that'll, that, that'll wrap it up. All right, so again, let's kind of roll through it. We're going to Acts, friends, eight, uh, chapter 8. Uh, again, there it is. So we're going to go back that way to chapter 8. Uh, and that's got 40 verses, so that's, that's kind of a long read as always. But, uh, you know, I'll just kind of pack some punches in there, pack some verses and chapters in there for you. So let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 8. And let's go ahead and read that, friends, on this afternoon podcast. All right. Again, great to be here with you. Always appreciate your time, uh, friends, just kind of wandering through the podcast. Bless you guys. Amen. And again, no more. Uh, there won't be a late podcast tonight on StreamYard. I think it's StreamYard. Uh, but uh, we'll see how tomorrow goes. So either I might take that out, reset it, do it in the morning. Uh, if I get an opportunity or uh, just stick to what's there, Sunday late night podcast, restream, again, jumping back on uh, the line there and uh, kind of see how things go. Like I said, I never know uh, here. Um, so, uh, yeah, I never know. We just happen to have an opportunity here at 2.30 in the afternoon to jump online for a bit and uh, give you guys an update message. I wanted to go back into repentance, a message for the church. Uh, and again, trying to throw some uh, extra scriptures on there. 
And again, you know, apologies in advance. I never know, like I said, I never know what's going to happen. Um, you guys know I already talked about it enough. I had a heart, kind of a mild heart attack. Uh, it, it was clearly uh, that's what it was. Uh, so I'm recovering. Uh, I didn't go to the hospital, but I have just rested and, and taken it easy. You guys have mentioned that on the last podcast. Um, you know, numbness in my arms and just trying to get through it and pray through it and, and just put that word on there, use that authority that I got uh, and uh, trust the process. Trust the Lord that he's, uh, you know, by his stripes I am healed. And I'm claiming it and receiving it and, uh, you know, definitely – uh, staying on course with that. So that, again, the, on top of that with the Wi-Fi problems, that's why there hasn't been anything going on this week. Uh, just trying to recover and get better and uh, settle in and, you know, get as much rest as possible. Eat, uh, eat my, you know, eating is good. Coffee's good. I, I've got all that going on. So, you know, getting better. And again, just uh, well, I'm going to try to reset stuff, but I'll, I'll leave Sunday for now, and then I, I I may pop in and do another update or something like that, but uh, I'll get this out, uh, posted out. You guys will see this. It'll be on the channels, and I'll get this to all the extra uh, extra channels, Messenger, all that, Facebook, and all that, too, so all the groups there. So bless you guys for being so patient with me here. Thank you guys again. Well, let's go on to Chapter 8 in the Book of Acts, friends. Uh, as Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution uh, against the church, which was at uh, Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles, Acts 7.56. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial, as we talked about in the other one uh, message there, uh, and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, uh, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committing them to prison, Acts 7.58. And therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Uh, and uh, the people with none accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, uh, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, that they were uh, that were lame and were healed again, claiming it and receiving that healing. That's Mark sixteen seventeen. That was great joy in that city. And there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaritan or Samaria, right? A giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying this man is the great power of God. And to him the regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sore uh, or sorceries. Not sore series, but sorceries. There you go. But when they believed Philip, uh, let's see, I think that's, uh, they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God. Uh, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women, Acts 1-3. Now, Simon himself believed also, uh, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, uh, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Uh, now when the apostles, which were of, at Jerusalem, heard of Samaria, uh, had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Uh, in 15, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Again, repentance, a message for the church. Talk about that Holy Spirit, friends, that Holy Ghost. Whereas yet he was fallen upon them, uh, none of them, which, let me cut that off, that bright light. I tell you, these lights, I'm trying to work on that, get some different ones in here. But uh, anyway, let's roll on, friends. Let's see, uh, let's kind of go backtrack here, maybe to 14 again. Let's go try that one. 
Now and the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. In 15, who, when they were come down, prayed for them, that they might receive, again, talking about that Holy Ghost, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Acts 6.6 6. And when Simon saw that thou, uh, through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them the money, or offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. All right. Um, getting scratched there. I don't know what that is. But that's that pin I got there. Hooked, uh, hooked through that. All right. Uh, let's keep rolling. 21. Uh, thou hast neither part nor lot in this manner, it says. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray, God, that uh, perhaps the thought of thy heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and the bond of iniquity. Hebrews 12.15 Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which have spoken ye have spoken come upon me. Genesis 20, verse 7 for that. And they, then, they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages, uh, friends, as we know, uh, of the Samaritans. And the angel of the Lord sat unto Philip, uh, saying, Arise and go toward the south, and the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, behold, the man of Ethiopia and eunuch, as we know the story uh, of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, Zephaniah 3.10, uh, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Esaias the prophet. Then the uh, spirit uh, said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to his chariot, or to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Esaias. All right. Uh, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? Uh, again, that's talking about that fivefold ministry. You got to have that teacher, preacher, pastor, evangelist, teacher, uh, share that word, teach that word. So when he said, "How can I, except some man should guide me?" and he desired Philip that would come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which he read was this: He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb. Uh, dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth, Isaiah 53, 7. And his humiliation and judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life taken is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus, right there. And as they went in their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. Uh, what doth hinder me to be baptized? There you go, friends. Get baptized. Repent and get baptized, friends. Uh, and Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, Thou mayest, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of Man, or the Son of God. Tricked you. I just wanted to see if you're awake, friends. There you go, the Son of God. Amen. 
Uh, and he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, but the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing, 1 Kings 18, 12. Uh, and, but Philip was founded as a toss, the passing through, or and passing through, he preached in all the cities, and he came to Caesarea. All right, what a great story, the road to Emmaus, friends. Let's get those notes right there. That's the road to Emmaus. How awesome. What a blessing of a story. That is great. All right. Uh, boy, we still got a little bit of time left. I am going to go through as many of the scriptures as I can in this uh, part of the message. We'll see where we're at at two hours here. Uh, amen. All right. Let's keep rolling. So, yeah, I'll just uh, got a few more scriptures for you. And Kind of just going to roll through them as best we can here. <clears throat> hope you guys are doing well. Hope you had a great Sabbath afternoon, friends. Uh, amen. All right. Uh, let's see. Always testing me to see where the scriptures are at. All right. So we're going to roll on over to Jude, friends. The general epistle of Jude. Let's go to that, my friends, in this hour here, second, almost the second hour. We're close to the two hours here, friends, so I'll probably just roll through a few, and we'll see where we're at at two hours here. Uh, got a, just a few more minutes till we hit that two o'clock, or that two-hour uh, uh, podcast there, but uh, it'll probably be just a, a little bit over two hours. But I, I've just got a few more scriptures. We're going to go to that. And that's uh, going to be it. So let's keep going. Uh, go to your Bibles. Make sure you got them with you, of course, in church. Jude chapter 1. Let's read it. So Jude, the, the servant here, friends, of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, and called mercy unto you. And peace and love be multiplied. That's First Peter 1, 2. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you or ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Philippians 1, 27 and 2 Timothy 1, 13. For there are certain men crept in unawares who are, behold, are before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, uh, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Got two of them for you on this. We've got Romans 9.21, Titus 1.16. All right. All right, uh, let's go on to five. I will therefore put you in remembrance, and though you once knew this, how that the Lord, uh, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he that hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as some, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. We got Genesis nineteen twenty four, Second Peter two six. Uh, likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dumb, uh, dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael and the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not uh, bring against him a railing accusation, uh, but said the Lord rebuke thee, Ezekiel 10, 13. For they speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things are they corrupt themselves. 
the null here. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. Uh, he says in 12, Now these are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about a winds, trees whose fruit with uh, withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Proverbs 25, 14. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their shame, wandering uh, own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Isaiah 57, verse 20. All right. And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied uh, of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute. And you guys could write that down in your uh, key verse there, friends, in 14. Ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed. And of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. 1 Samuel 2.3, Malachi 3.13. Now these are murmurs. Again, as we clearly see, friends, every single day, just watch what's going on, uh, and we see it. We see what's going on. So these are murmurs, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Proverbs 28, 21. But beloved, remember the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you, friends, as we look at 18, uh, there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. 1 Timothy 4, 1. Now, these be they who uh, separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. Proverbs 18, 1, Hosea 4, 14. But you, beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, uh, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ into eternal life. And of some... Have compassion, making the difference. The others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. That even, uh, let's see, having even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and. Ever. What a good scripture, friends. All right, so there you go. And, all right, second hour here. All right. Give me a minute here. So we got just a couple here. Uh, I may go ahead and close out with them. We got Proverbs 27. Let's go all the way over there to Proverbs, friends. Uh, let's pull that pulpit up, make sure. Now, I did do 27. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I did repeat it there. That's okay. Uh, so I already did problems. I, I don't even know what I was looking at. I just repeated the whole thing uh, over again. So that's okay. We'll scratch that off the list. It happens. I get so many notes in there, uh, friends, and so much uh, information thrown in there that uh, I don't pay attention sometimes to the scriptures that I add. So, All right. So let's get that off the list so I can clear that out of my notes, uh, friends, if I can here. All right. Okay. Well, that clears that up. That leaves down to two. And uh, let's see what do we want to do here. I think we could. Um, yeah, let's go one more. Let's let's go ahead and roll with one more, and I'll move the other one uh, to the next one here. So, 
All right. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and do that. I'll I'll shuffle that down to the next podcast, uh, friends. So let me get that done here. If I can, if I may. All uh, right. Um, so let me shuffle my scriptures down here. Let me shuffle my schedules just a bit. It, it'll probably be uh, just an extra one on that one. So bear with me, guys. All right, uh, yeah, let's go to Isaiah, uh, friends, and I'll, I'll maneuver my schedule here after the podcast, but I wanted to get this one more out. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and shuffle on over to Isaiah, uh, which we're just talking about there. I don't know if I read that already, but I don't think I did. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 3. Uh, if I can find it, I know where, right where it's at. I don't know why I'm stumbling on it, but uh, yeah, of Isaiah right there uh, and we want to go to chapter 3 friends let's go to chapter 3 in the book of Isaiah uh, if I can and I will I don't know if I did my notes but I hopefully I don't know if I did didn't look like I did any of my notes uh oh I'm in trouble okay well we're gonna roll with chapter 3 I think maybe that's what we'll do and maybe we'll just close out with Yeah, uh, for some, some reason, I don't know why I didn't even do the rest of it. But uh, we will close out with chapter 3. So bear with me. We're going to uh, do some shuffling off the buffalo again. I don't know. That's, just, that, that's a song. You know, all know that one, shuffling off the buffalo in the cold weather and the cold degrees but uh hey we're we're at a balmy 40 here so well not balmy but uh we're in a in a snap happy 41 amen that's that's pretty awesome all right so three and we're going to do one to 26 here for some reason i got to get these notes together uh friends so bear with me here and again these are going to be all all rewritten and redone here uh, let's see, so let's go ahead and do that, and let's go ahead and do that. All right, the dogs are barking outside. We can hear that happening, so let's go to it. Let's close out uh, with John, uh, not John, Isaiah chapter 3. For behold... Uh, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judea the, uh, the stay and the staff and the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. The mighty man, the man of war, the judge, the prophet, the prudent, and the ancient, captain of fifty, and the honorable man, and the counselor, and the cunning artificer, artificer, right? Is that what that is? Artificer and the eloquent orator. There we go. And I will give children to be the prince, of their princes. I uh, <laughs> dust, a dust ball just plopped up here. Well, wow. uh, and I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. Uh, Ecclesiastes ten sixteen, and the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. Uh, the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable, as we are in Isaiah, friends, chapter 3. Uh, again, didn't get a chance to get the notes together there, so that's why it's kind of scrambled a little bit. And, and like I said, I had uh, all the way to chapter 6, but uh, we'll go ahead and just close out with this one. So we're in verse 6. Chapter 3 in uh, Isaiah again, as they were saying. All right, when a man shall take hold of his brother, the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are again or against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. Micah 3.12 
uh, the shoe of their continents doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. Uh, all right, and they hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have reward, uh, rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous, then it shall be well with him. They shall, uh, oops, there it is. Uh, let's see, shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him. For the reward of his hands shall be given him. That's Psalm 160, or 11, verse 6. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. Isaiah 3, 4. The Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into the judgment with the ancients of his people, and the princes thereof, for ye have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses, Isaiah 5, 7. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces, and grind their faces of the poor? Saith the Lord God of hosts, Isaiah 58, verse 4. Uh, moreover, the Lord saith, uh, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks as wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and make it, uh, making a tinkling with their feet. All right, I have to make sure the channels aren't sleeping here. Uh, all right, so let's go to 17. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round eye or tires, uh, let's see, like the moon. Now, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, or sweet balls as it says here, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and nose jewels, the changeable sweets of the apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils and it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell there shall be stank he says Ugh. all right instead of a girdle a rent and instead of well set baldness uh let's see and instead of a stomacher a girding of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty isaiah 22 12 Thy men shall fall by the sword, and the mighty in the war, and her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being a desolate shall uh, shall set or sit upon the ground. And that's it, friends. There you go. Last uh, kind of a reset there for Isaiah chapter three, and I'll have to go through uh, and get all the notes changed out and set and reset and do all that as i usually like to do and enjoy doing you know that's my quiet time with the lord that's what uh when i get my bible study uh time going on there all right so i'm going to switch this up here just a bit again and we got chapter three uh one to 26 kind of a last minute addition to the uh, notes there all right, uh, let's see. That's okay. Good, solid, good two and a half hours of podcasting there. Had to get back on it. You know, I'm not going to, I'm just not going to let the devil, uh, you know, throw me off my groove and off my position. Even though, like I said, it's been a rough week again, uh, and these happen. So, you know, I'm glad you guys are kind of uh, adjusting to that. You know, um, the intentions, as always, was doing them every day and then so much has happened uh, again moving locations uh and uh you know being in a different place being in a different set of studios which i've been at the uh, last four years but uh the the changes here uh the distractions in the day the interference with the wi-fi the noise uh the continual you know just the construction and adjusting in here 
I really threw my schedule off. I, I was doing them during the day. I was doing them in the morning, in the beginning, uh, whenever I had a chance, and then sometimes late night, early morning, before work and after. Uh, but again, everything got shifted. I changed locations, and then everything just, you know, everything got changed. Uh, and so, um, you know, as the renovations continue, that's what happened. So anyway, I just got to roll with it. We'll see what happens. I'll continue out and uh, see what I can get going here and rolling. Uh, all right. So there you go. There's your update here, friends. And, of course, your Bible study podcast on this Saturday, Sabbath, friends. Now, now I hope you get to church tomorrow. Uh, so uh, I do have one scheduled out at 11 o'clock tomorrow. Like I said, I may jump on StreamYard. I, I may get back on that. Uh, tomorrow, uh, either morning or something, I may pre-tape or pre-record a, a podcast there. I uh, I never know. Like I said, I'm gonna try. I'm feeling a lot better. Try to get back on track with uh, some things here, and uh, you know, try to get back on it. So that's awesome. I'm uh, good to good to be back. Good to be back in the studio uh, again. So uh, again, I'll post all this out get all this uh set up and reset so there you go uh stream or not stream yard restream tv but uh radio.co uk i'll see you on the next podcast you guys take care have a great saturday friends our sabbath for uh the 10th of february and we started this podcast about 2 30 in the afternoon pastor rick i'm your host friends uh ministry podcast network friends i get this post out you guys have a great day radio.co uk on the air See you soon. I'll talk to you soon. All right. There it is. There's that one. Let's go to our channel three back up on Spreaker Audio. I'll see you on the next one. You guys take care and talk to you soon, friends. All right. There that is. And there that be. Amen. All right. Let's go to channel one on our main. Let's get that rolling up here on that main channel. Uh, friends. Breaker audio podcast on the air. Uh, I'll talk to you guys on the next broadcast. You guys have a great Saturday and a great weekend. Uh, amen. As you go to church in the morning, get that church in. All right. Spreaker Channel 1 main line. Pastor Rick here. Talk to you on the next broadcast. You guys take care. I'll get this post out as soon as I can. Have a good one, and I'll see you soon.